Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. And today we're going to talk about some news of the week. Um, <clears throat> first off, Crossout's new update coming for Christmas, helicopter propellers, things of that nature. And then we also have some Radeon 7900 XT and XTX news, benchmarks, um, things to look at there. So stay tuned. All right. So Crossout had some pretty exciting and yet terrifying news for players this week, uh, bringing propellers into the game. And a lot of people have been worried about it, um, saying that hovers are bad enough. We don't need to be fighting enemies in the air. And as much as I agree, I also think that the game needs something to refresh it a bit. Um, my opinion is that what they could do is add propellers to the game permanently if they choose to do so. And we'll get into that in a minute. And they could put in a separate game mode that keeps propeller builds out of core gameplay. Core gameplay meaning like get the wires, get the scrap, you know, things like that. Um, they could maybe keep it in for raids. I'm not sure how well that would work, though. But uh, in any case, the news is that the propellers will be given to everybody during this upcoming event for Christmas or for the holidays. And... It'll last like 40 days and you can only use it in the event that will be taking place during this time. Now, the devs did go on to say that they will be taking player feedback on the propellers and depending on the feedback that they get from the players, they may or may not decide to put the propellers in the game permanently as a movement part. So that will be something interesting to see in the future. Uh, right here, we have a recap of the gameplay from the developer live stream. So we can go ahead and watch this. This is during um, when they're playing with these propeller builds they are in the special uh, standalone game mode for the event. And it makes it to where you can play with hovers, or not hovers, with propellers, or you could be on the ground. Um, they have a special map. I think they said there's like three special maps specifically catered to like flying around and things like that. Um, now, it doesn't seem like it's going to be too difficult to drive these things. It's definitely going to be something to get used to. I personally think it's going to be something really fun and interesting to get into and try out and see what people come up with. I think people are going to come up with some pretty interesting stuff. And the gist of what I got from this is that you're going to be able to create any build you want just, you know, for this game mode specifically, but you're going to be able to create any vehicle you want from 3000 power score to 10,000 power score. And you can use propellers. You can use wheels. You can, you can pretty much do whatever you want, but this is going to be catered to propeller builds mostly. And they said they, they did make a comment on PVP uh being implemented as a crossplay thing uh they talked a little bit about it but they didn't have too much information to give they said that they are still working on crossplay uh but it won't be implemented this year which is super unfortunate um they said as they continue to work on it they hope to be able to implement crossplay into the game by next year what next year means I don't know. Um, and they went on to say that it's not a hundred percent guarantee. So a bit of disappointing news in that regard, because this game seriously needs some cross play action. Things get stale real quick. Going against the same people all the time. Isn't always the fun, most fun thing in the world to do. So 
we'll have to see what the devs decide to do within the next year. We hope for the best as players, I guess. And for now, we'll, you know, we'll have the Christmas event. We'll have this propeller event to try out. I'll definitely be trying it out. I'll have to see what I can come up with. Not really sure what I'll be making for a build, but we'll have to see. So anyways, I think that's pretty much it for the cross outside of things. Why don't we move on to the graphics cards? See what's going on over there, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So as per Tom's hardware, we have some news in regards to the new GPUs. and. It's kind of interesting, and I've watched other reviews on the 7900 XT and XTX from Jay's Two Cents and Steve from Gamers Nexus. It's not looking too good, um, I'll be honest. So if we look at the total power draw of the GPUs, we can see that the 6900 XT, which would be the nearest competitor, uh, from previous gen Radeon GPUs uh, draws around 308 watts and the RX 7900 XT drawing not too much more 309 so you know one watt more that's that's not too bad that's not too bad at all at least they're keeping a power draw down though in regards to that, it does seem that the 7900 XT falls short in performance with um, the RTX 4080 beating it or matching it in most regards, which is good that there's a competitor. But let's be honest, the RTX 4080, not a very good buy anyway. But if you're going to buy a graphics card from one of these new gen lines you might as well get the 7900 xt because you're saving yourself three or four hundred bucks so why not now uh let's compare this to the 3080 and 3090 so their overall core clock is a, a good chunk higher though that doesn't always mean they're going to be better um, the 3080 and 3090 hover around the 1800 mark in terms of their core clocks, where the 7900 XT and XTX hover around a 2500 boost, and that is significantly better. But in terms of raw performance, uh, get on to that here in a second, but um. The GPU temperatures, let's see what we got here. So the 7900 XTX um, looks like that, you know, obviously it's going to depend on what case it's in as well, but it looks like on average, we're looking at about 64 degrees C and that's not too bad. I mean, that's about where my 6650 XT is most times. And the 7900 XT is at about 66 degrees C. So I'm not really sure how that came into play. You would think that the more power hungry card would heat up more. Um, but then again, if it does have a beefier cooler, that could explain why it's cooling a little bit better than its little brother in comparison to the 4080 4080 does see better temps not by much but about four degrees c and the rtx 3090 is at about the same so we don't see a whole lot of differences in temps and the 6950 does run pretty well a little bit hotter than than the newer cards so uh, all about the same, though, within about five or six degrees of one another. So not a huge difference there. And fan speed, not super interested in that. Now let's look at the overall noise levels of the cards. So for the RX 7900 XT, you're looking at about 54 decibels. That's, you know, about average for any large GPU. And comparing that to the 6900 XT at about 55 decibels, you're not really going to notice much of a difference there. It's one decibel difference. 
Um, 3080, 55 decibels. Again, 6800 XT, 55 decibels. And 7900 XTX, 56 decibels, which we do expect that to be a little bit higher noise levels, considering that it probably does have a bigger heat sink on it. And the fans do need to ramp up a little bit more to compensate for that cooling. Um, in comparison to the 6950 XT from Sapphire at 58 decibels, again, three decibels, you're not going to notice a massive difference in noise levels there. So that's that. And let's look at some GPU testing here. So we have some games and we'll, we'll just kind of go through them a little bit. And we're looking at a Plague Tale Requiem and at, let me see. So this is for the XTX testing. And for 1080p Ultra, you're looking at about 129, it, it looks like. So that's not too bad. You know, I would expect a little bit more for a flagship card. Uh, 1440p, 100 with an average power draw of 350 on both, give or take, a half a watt or so. Um, Borderlands 3, 1080p, badass settings, 249, 250 it looks like, and that's pretty good. I, I mean, that game can be a little bit hard to run at times. 1440p, badass settings, 188 FPS on average. Um, Let's see. Let's look at Control. That's a visually demanding game. So at 1080p high settings, you're looking at about 117 FPS on average. For 1440p high, you get about 75, so almost half. Um, Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p ray tracing on Ultra, 64 FPS. Now, I wish they did have a non-ray traced uh standard for this but they do not uh 1440p ray tracing ultra settings 42 fps and drawing around 350 watts it looks like the pretty much about the same cross board here and we're looking at far cry 6 at 1080p ultra settings 182 fps and if we go down to 1440p, not much of a difference there. So I, I'm not really sure what happened there. It looks like there's some kind of bottleneck at 1080p on Far Cry 6 um, where it won't go much higher. I'm not sure what that is. That's interesting. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, 1080p Ultra, 84 FPS. That's actually not too bad. Uh, also again, 1440p, 83 FPS, not much of a difference there. That's interesting. Uh, Forza Horizon 5, 1080p extreme settings, 166 FPS on average, 1440p extreme, 147 on average. So a little bit of a dip there, but not too bad. If you're running a 144 Hertz monitor, it should still look crispy. Horizon Zero Dawn, 1080p ultimate settings, 200 FPS on average, 1440p ultimate, 190. So not too much of a difference here across the board. Um, do they have, okay, they don't have uh, benchmarks for the 7900 XT. Um, unless, hold on, let's see here. Yes, they do. Okay, all right, good. So, again, we're going to do the same games. We're looking at a Plague Tale Requiem, 1080p Ultra, 117. What does that compare to on this? You're looking at about 129 and 100 FPS for 1440p, as in the 7900 XT testing, there was 89 on average. So not too much of a difference there. Um. Borderlands 3, 1080p, badass settings, 224 FPS, 1440p at 165. That compares to 249 and 188, respectively. Uh, control, 1080p, high settings, 100 FPS, 1440p high, 63. 
So let's look at that. So yeah, I mean, they're, they're really not too far apart in performance. It looks like honestly. Um, and then if we look at cyberpunk, we got 1080p ray tracing, ultra settings, 57 FPS and at 1440p ray trace settings, ultra 36 FPS. How does that compare? uh about the same again so i mean you're not really seeing too much of a difference between these two cards it's I, I i'm not really sure what to think about this it's kind of disappointing actually because for the xt version only being about 200 dollars cheaper or a hundred dollars cheaper um is it really worth it to get that when you could just go with the XTX version and be done with it? Uh, I, I mean, and also, I mean, when you compare some of these tests to, uh, if you look at some other YouTubers that specifically like test PC components and stuff like that and do like um, testing and stuff like that, I, I don't know, that was redundant. Um, but you'll see that the 7900 XT, it does fall short when compared to uh, the 4080 and 4090. It doesn't really hold up very well as to where the XTX is a lot more on par in most cases, even beating them in some cases. So if you're looking at getting one of the new graphics cards, I would say if you can drop the extra hundred and some dollars. And go ahead and get the XTX version because plain and simple, it's going to be a better card and you're going to get more frames for your money. And if you're looking for something that's more of a direct competitor for the 4080 and 4090, you're definitely going to want this card instead. Um, the performance doesn't really add up too much when you're looking at a you know flagship card like the 7900 XT. It just doesn't perform in the bracket that it needs to be in so yeah i think that's pretty much about it guys um now if you can find a gpu uh 7900 xtx or xt whichever you decide to go for good luck um from what i know they are pretty much sold out of both of these gpus everywhere you look so you may have to back order or just wait for them to come back in stock but all in all that's pretty much about it for this week's news and i hope you guys enjoyed if you learned something from this don't forget to uh like the video and if you have any comments go ahead and leave that in the comment se section below i also do have a patreon if you would like to support the channel you can check that out um but yeah that's it for today guys so this is nubis tech and games and i'll catch you on the next one